Ladies and gents, welcome to a great evening. If you're looking for a world of gumshoes, wise guys, gorgeous dames, and dirty rats, kick back and enjoy. Welcome to Full Moon Matinee. Good evening, and welcome to Full Moon Matinee. I'm your host, the detective, conducting investigations into the finest crime dramas and film noir from the golden age of Hollywood. Tonight's picture is from 1946, They Made Me a Killer, starring Robert Lowry, Barbara Britton, and Lola Lane. Now, Robert Lowry uh, he began his career, film career, in 1936. It was from 1936 to 1967. Initially, mostly, you know, small roles, uh, uncredited parts. But he began to get more significant roles in the early 40s. Uh, and he played across all genres. He was in westerns, musicals, mysteries, comedies, dramas. Uh, very well-rounded. And then beginning in the 1950s, he also uh, was very active in television. Many guest appearances in many television series. But the one series that he was uh, a regular in, uh, it was the one that he was a regular of, uh, was a TV series called Circus Boy. Uh, he played the role of Big Tim Champion in, it, it was about 49 episodes in 1956 and 1957. Now, uh, Barbara Britton, also in tonight's picture, uh, her career uh, in film was from 1941 to 67, so pretty much the same time period. Uh, again, played in all genres, but really uh, was best remembered for her roles in westerns. Uh, she uh, did go into television, uh, much like Lowry. Uh, guest appearances, uh, was also in a lot of variety shows. But she did make two major contribut contributory notes to television. Um, in 1959, she was in Head of the Family, which was the pilot for what eventually became the Dick Van Dyke Show. Also, she played the role of Pamela North slash Kitty Pomeroy in what was a radio and television series, Mr. and Mrs. North. And uh, it, it was in 1960, uh, Barbara got her star for television on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Her star is at 1719 Vine Street. So, from 1946, they made me a killer. Let's roll the picture.
Might hold her there, Joe. What are you going to do with it, Tom? Junk it. We could fix it up. You heard me. Scrap it. Oh, now he's up. We could salvage a good piece of it and... I don't want any part of it. That heap killed chick. I don't want to ever see it again. I know it's tough, losing your kid brother. But you can't go on like this. You've got to let down. I will, as soon as I get out of town. Well, what good's that going to do? You've got a good job here and a real future. Yeah, sweating extra speed out of jalopies. So thrill-hungry kids can get themselves cracked up. You've got a partnership in the garage if you'll stay. Thanks, Patrick. You're a swell guy. I'm practical. The way you take those heaps and juice them up, why, we could take a lot of old has-been crates and make them into custom built. Thanks, Pat. But this is the way it's got to be. Well, you'll need some dough wherever you land. Well, I've got enough. If I get stuck, I'll sell the car when I get to California. I can see your mind's made up. If you ever come back, I'll have a spot for you. Thanks, Pat. Looks so hot, do they? Like a stack of hots on a cold griddle. Is this your lot, mister? No, I'm waiting for the owner. If he can find me a customer with a big enough bankroll, I'll sell this baby. Well, I might be interested. Is she as fast as she looks? 120 fast enough for you? You're talking my language. Good. Get in. My name's Tom Durling. Mine's Betty. All right, Betty. Hang on and watch the speed cops roll past. Fast enough for you? Like a short order cook. Good. How about making a quick deal? Not me. My boyfriend has to give it the once over first. Boyfriend, huh? When can I see him? Tomorrow morning. That's the way it has to be. For my birthday present, I'm sure I can talk him into it. Yeah, I'm sure you can. Know where I can put up for the night? Well, I'm at Mrs. Randall's boarding house. Cash and Whistler's mother at 3.50 a day. Good enough. Gosh, it's him. Who, the boyfriend? No, the kid just lives here. He works in the bank. He's got a crush on me. Don't tell him about the car. He's the jealous type. Maybe you could get him to buy it for you. He couldn't buy me a refill for a cup of joe. Hello, Steve. Hello, Betty. Steve, I want you to meet Tom Derling, an old friend of mine from out of town. This is Steve Reynolds. Howdy. How are you? We had a date, Betty, remember? Oh, I'll hurry and change. Steve, Tom's staying overnight. Will you help him get a room? Sure. Good night, Betty. Happy birthday. Her birthday? Well, did you get her something? She's only been here a week. Quite a girl. Yeah, quite a girl. Is your boyfriend the jealous type? Maybe I'm going to lose a sale because Steve took you to the show last night. <laughs> oh, that kid. I'm sorry he's late. I could demonstrate the car for you if you have something else to do. All I want to do in this town is leave it. Here they come. Hello, dear. Hello. Sorry to keep you waiting. I want you to meet Tom Durling. This is Jack Conley I was telling you about. Howdy. Glad to know you, Durling. And his brother Frank. Oh, yeah. So this is it, huh? This and what's under the hood, I'd like to show you. In just a few minutes, if you don't mind. Got a little business in the bank. Only take a minute. Take a little ride then, huh? Okay. You better turn on the glamour. Your boyfriend doesn't seem very interested in your birthday present. <laughs> Don't worry, you've got things on his mind. 
This is only a 10-minute parking zone. Oh, we're waiting for a friend in the bank. It'll make it snappy. You'll get a ticket. Okay, I'll drive around the block. Never mind that. Stay here. Hello, Betty. Hello, Tom. Hello, Steve. I was just going out to lunch. Maybe you'd like to No, go. I can't. Excuse me. I'm busy. I'd better move before that cop gets back. I said stay here. Anything wrong? If I can be of any help. Hey, what's going on? Keep that motor running. Get ready to shove off. Hey, what is this? You heard me. They're taking orders. All right, come on. Get going. Oh! I tried to brush him. Anyway, the information I pumped out of him helped plenty, didn't it? Yeah, it helped. How much did we get? Oh, around right, 100 feet. <laughs> Sonny's talking to me. What do you expect me to say? Oh, look, mister. I've been a good boy. Here, I have a couple of nickels. I didn't have much choice, did I? No, you were not kind of a spot. And you're still on a spot. Yeah, we all got a murder rap hanging on us. That copper croaks. Shut up. On the road of pieces of walnut grove. That's where you drop us. We're leaving you behind, Sonny. You can take care of yourself. Yeah? Maybe I can. Look out! Send them in. Yeah. Stay on your feet. You kind of banged up. Yeah? The bank guard is dead. Looks like the cop might kick off, too. I didn't shoot them. No? Then what were you using this for? To pick your teeth? It's the gun that shot them both, and it's the gun we found on you. It's not my gun. I was framed into the stick-up. That girl was trying uh, to... Are you going to stick to that fairy tale? The big bad girl forced the good little boy to shoot two men. I didn't shoot anybody. Steve Reynolds saw the whole thing. He happened along just then, and... Oh, Reynolds just happened along then. And you just happened to be there at the same time. What do you take us for? I want the truth. You've got it there in my statement. From Chicago, huh? What'd you come out here for? It's all in there. I was asking a question. My brother was killed. I don't want to live there anymore. Oh. Sensitive type. I ran out of dough. I 
stopped in Santa Marta to sell my car. And those two, Jack and Frank Conley, they come out here with you? I never saw them before today at the bank. And you thought they wanted to buy your car? Nice car, too. A real nice car. It's not hot, if that's what you mean. Buying old cars and fixing them up is my racket. Oh, so you got a racket, huh? It's my work. I'm good at it. In there, you'll find the name of a man in Chicago, Pat Travers. He'll tell you all about me. Tell me what? That you worked there? That you went to church on Sunday? You weren't in Chicago this morning. You were right here, sticking up a bank. And Reynolds gave you and your girlfriend all the information you needed. Is that what he said? He's not saying much. He may not live either. Mr. Booth, believe me, Steve Reynolds had nothing to do with this. Let me talk to him. He'll set you straight on both of us. He'll set you in the gas chamber, and that's where you're headed, darling. If you weren't in on this, why didn't you jump out of the car in front of the bank? I couldn't. They had their guns on me. Oh, what's the use? You won't let me talk to him. Sure we will. We'll all talk to him. If he comes, too. Call me when Reynolds is conscious. Uh, take Darling to the hospital and wait. Okay, come on. I'm sorry, Miss Reynolds. That's about the whole story. Oh, just a moment. Here's Dr. Reed. He'd like to talk to you. Doctor, it's Miss Reynolds, Steve Reynolds' sister. Dr. Reed, we can't wait, Miss Reynolds. We're going to operate in a few minutes. I'll leave right away. I, I should be there in two hours. And please, please do everything you can for him. Miss Reynolds, we just heard over the radio. I know about my brother. I was just leaving for Santa Marta. Miss Reynolds, uh, before you go, <coughs> inasmuch as your brother's mixed up in this thing, don't you think we should get a substitute teacher for the time being? You know how the parents are. Mr. Willoughby, you have my resignation. If you'll excuse me, I'll just miss the class. Of course, once your brother's cleared, Miss Reynolds, we want you back. We can't let sentiment interfere with our duty. I can. Well, he just came out of the operating room. Come on. What about him? We've done all we could. I give him just a few minutes. You can go in now. Go on. Remember me, Durling? The fellow in the car with Betty. They think I was in on this stick-up. Tell them what you saw. They had their guns on me. Tell them, Steve. You saw them. Steve, you've got to tell them I'm charged with murder. Well, there's your alibi. Thank you. 
Close the door. If only I could have talked to him or done something. There's nothing more you could have done. I'm sorry, Miss Reynolds. In the third place, gentlemen, I hardly need warn you against the danger of causing any injury to the muscles, blood vessels, and nerves of the abdominal wall. What do you want? Can't you see we're operating? There's a murderer in the building, Doctor. There's nobody here but my students. What do you mean, breaking in like this? No gown, no mask. Get out! Ronald says that you showed up. You stay here and check everybody who comes out of this room. You bring the Reynolds girl in my office. You ever mentioned Tom Durling to you? No. Anybody named Frank? No. This girl, Betty, maybe he wrote you about her, where she came from. Mr. Booth, suppose my brother was in front of the bank. He worked there. Durling says he was framed, too. You believe him? Miss Reynolds, let's just say that your brother got in with the wrong guy, or maybe fell for a pretty face. It happens, you know. If you find the others, you'll know he had nothing to do with it. We'll find them, all right. Any ideas as to where we should look? What about Durling? Not yet, Chief. Shall we follow the girl? Get Durling! Pretty interesting job. What did that guy mean, waiter? Some guy said he got away. Probably meant you. about surgery, aren't you? You know you can take off that mask now. I'm sorry, but I have to lock up. I'll be out in a few minutes. Five minutes to get out of here. If I let you go, will you promise to be quiet? I'm sorry, but you asked for it, sister. Sometimes later than other times. It's always late, though. No. Miss Reynolds, don't yell. Just stand there and listen, please. What do you want? Who are you? You're the man in the hospital. 
darling. Wait, I need your help. I'm just as innocent as your brother. Can you prove that? If I could get my hands on those guys who framed us, I could prove plenty. Why should I believe you? You have to. You want to clear your brother, don't you? You'll not hit him and you kill the last chance of clearing him. Pardon, miss. We're looking for somebody. Young fella. Dark, about six foot, curly black hair. Seen someone like that hanging around? No, I haven't seen anyone. Sorry, mister. Got to take this away. We kind of thought this guy might try to get on the plane tonight. Better watch yourself, miss. He's a killer. Come on, Dan. Train's in. Thanks. Why'd you do it? I don't know. For a minute, I... That's my train. Wait. I've been following you all day. I watched you at the funeral this afternoon. Do you want to clear your brother or don't you? The police said... Would I be here risking my neck talking to you if I weren't on the level? All aboard. Well, what can you do? By myself, nothing. I can't show my face. But with you, someone who can work out in the open, together we might be able to untangle this thing. All right. What do we do? First thing, we try to get this off. Late tonight, huh? Always work late. Helps hard to get. And they're lonely out here. I like it. Nobody to pester me. Got a radio? I don't like radios. Blah, blah, blah. A lot of nonsense. You know, it's lucky for me you're here. The silliest thing happened. I guess I should be mad at the kid, but after all, it was as much my fault as his. I shouldn't have let him play with him. I can't very well go downtown. The guys had kid me the rest of my life. Let my kid lock me up in my own handcuffs. I feel like an idiot. Where's the key? The kid lost it. Hmm. Well, I guess we can get you out of it without uh, cutting your arm off. You at the sheriff's office? I don't recollect seeing you around before. I'm a new man. Oh. Well, I think I may have a key over here. Henry! Nancy, you come in here. Henry, Mr. Blake just phoned wants you to come downtown right away. I thought he would. He shot a man. You're going to take these off before you go, aren't you? Sure, sure. They've got the roads all blocked. They're looking for that bank robber and they want you to help. Up with them, young man. What are you doing, Henry? That's him, the bank robber. Now hold his gun on him, Nancy. That's it. So you was playing as a kid, was you, young man? You ashamed of yourself trying to fool an old man? Hold on, Nancy. Watch him. All right, give me your wrist. There you are. Now, give me the gun, Nancy. There. I'll go on out and phone the sheriff, tell him I'll be right down. Say, I've got a surprise for him. Oh, land safe. Sheriff Blake, please. Sheriff? Henry just caught that bank robber. Yes. In a blacksmith shop. We're starting right away. Henry, shall I get the car? He must be tired. You'd better rest a while. Well, that was a swell idea I had. If it hadn't been for you. I had to do something. You must have cat blood in you, the way you crept up behind that blacksmith. You never knew what hit him. I hope he's all right. Ah, don't worry. You know what you did when you hit him, don't you? You jumped into this thing with both feet. I realize that. You said you had some kind of plan. That's right. Now, the first thing I want you to do is go to Mrs. Randall's boarding house and get everything your brother left behind there. And that girl, Betty, might have left something, too. What am I supposed to find? I don't know. But at least it's a place to start. You ready?
No dice. We might as well have left this at the boarding house. Try the suitcase of Betty. Shouldn't have been kicked around. No wonder she left it. It's empty. Those guys got away with a hundred thousand bucks and left us holding two moth-eaten bags. You're not after the money. In the spot I'm in, it'd come in mighty handy. Just a minute. If I thought that's what you wanted, another. Forget it. We don't even know where they are or have any idea how to get started finding them. You better take the train home in the morning. What are you going to do? Sit here. Cut out paper dolls and wait for them to find me. Wait a minute. What? These are restaurant doilies, aren't they? Yes. She used them to patch the holes in the lining. Why wouldn't she use newspaper? Why doilies? The checks. The way she talked. When I asked her if the car was fast enough, she said, like a short order cook. That's it, and a cup of joe. What does it mean? Her lingo, hash house talk. And now these doilies. The River Ford Inn. The Glen Grove Tea Room. Pixel Cafe, Glendale. You think she was a waitress and worked in these places? Maybe. Just maybe. One of these spots is in Glendale and the others are a couple of hundred miles away. We'll have to take the back road if you get caught with me. Oh, you wouldn't dare show your face. I'll have to take that chance. Thanks. must have just eaten there once and picked up the matches. He said she came from someplace around here. A waitress named Betty Forrester, huh? Yeah. My wife and I were wondering what happened to her. We met her on our honeymoon. Well, not this place. We've never had any women working here. Sorry. Thanks, anyway. Yeah. Well, let's go. One more stop. That's not it. Betty, they was asking about, huh? Yeah. Try this one alone. You're the most persistent guy I ever saw. You know what it says in the book? He punching. It also says something about patrolling your beat. Dishes, dishes. Still got another sink full. Nobody can do run a tea room without help. Mr. Roach. Mr. Wilson. I was wondering where you two have been keeping yourselves. Hiya, Ma. Hiya, Ma. Hey, what's cooking? Turkey. I just smelled them a mile off. Oh, oh, oh. Ah, thanks. Say, some coffee go good with these, Ma. Are you uh, still all alone here? Huh. He's hoping his girlfriend might have come back. Ain't seen hide the hair, baby, since you left two weeks ago. What can I do for you, dear? I just got into town and thought maybe you could use some help. Uh-uh. I don't think so. Well, what's the matter, Ma? You know you could use some help. I don't know. I've been getting along all right. Ah, go on. You told me yourself your dishwashing machine was busted. Give a girl a job. She looks like she'd be good, too. Well, I... Oh, all right. I pay 20 a week in meals. You sleep out. That's all right. You can start now. I'll tell you for a full day, of course. <laughs> 
Uh, could you now spare a little time for the state? And once you mentioned Betty to the policeman, I was sure it was the right place. Then later in the afternoon, while I was washing the dishes, I saw her sneak out a tray with three plates of food, but there was no one in the dining room. Serving three people who weren't there. Looks like the hideout, all right. It has to be. Now, the thing to do is to go to the police. Nothing doing. Where will that get us? First thing they'll do is throw me in the clink, and I've had another clink. But when they get the real crooks, it won't. Suppose they turn around and say that your brother and I went on the hole up and stick to that story. Then where are we? Back in the soup with him for company. What else? I'll handle this my own way. How? What are you going to do? From now on, you're out of it. But you... You're not going back there. If anything should happen, your life wouldn't be worth two cents. I still think we should call in the police. Forget it. We'll get you a place to sleep. In the morning, I'm going to pay a little visit to our pal. <laughs> yeah, I love how this movie opened up. A car mechanic who dresses up in a suit, a tie, and a fedora. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you don't see that. You know, that certainly comes across as strange to us today. But, um, you know, back in those days, yeah, people tended to dress more formally in general. But if we remember that scene, uh, he was about to get in his car and make a long car trip. You know, in those days, uh, you know, of course, people dressed more formally in general. But there were four things that was very customary and tradition uh, in those days that you certainly made a point to dress up for. One was if you were traveling, whether that's by bus, by train, by plane, or even a long car trip, which, you know, anything out of town, uh, you, you wanted to dress proper so that John Q. Public would have a good impression of you. You would dress for any errand to the bank. Uh, even if it was just a cash a check or a deposit a check, uh, you made a point to dress up before you walked into the lobby of that bank. People would dress up to go to doctor's appointments. You know, they want the doctor to have a good impression of them and uh, you know, look like they were well-to-do. So you dressed up for doctor's appointments. And another big one, back in those days, people dressed up to go to sports events. Now today, you know, of course you're wearing your jersey and, you know, your baseball hat and, you know, all the fan gear. But no, back then, you dressed up much like you would go to church uh, when you went to sports events. And maybe you've noticed, if you've, ever, if you've ever seen old film clips of old baseball games, and if there's a camera pan uh, of, of the crowd seated in the stadium, you see all the guys wearing suits and fedoras, the ladies would dress up. Yeah, people dressed in a suit and tie to go to a baseball game, much like they would go to church. So, uh, you know, that opening scene, while it may look strange to us in that day, that would have been pretty de rigueur because, you know, he was going on that long car trip traveling. <laughs> but speaking of car trips, I love it when uh, he, he and uh, Betty, they're in that car and he's got that pedal to the metal flooring it and the speedometer says 110 miles an hour. But if you look at the camera view, how the camera shot is looking back at him through the windshield, but you can see the background behind him, <laughs> that background was not fading away and disappearing at anything that looked anywhere near 110 miles an hour. So, uh, yeah, l l let's dink the director on that one. Now, uh, I gotta tell you though, one good thing about that scene though, <laughs> old Betty. <laughs> yeah, I'm digging ready Betty. <laughs> That's just what I like. Fast cars and faster women. <laughs> uh, but we do see here 
that uh, June, you know, when she gets the job there at the diner, she notices that Ma fixes up, you know, she's got this tray with three plates on it, and she's taking it away, you know, obviously serving somebody, but there's nobody in the dining room. So June's beginning to wonder, you know, is this the crook's hideout? <laughs> well, how about we go ahead and find out? Let's get back to They Made Me a Killer. station next door. He didn't see you. No. I'll wait until he chased after a speeder. Oh, no. I picked up something for you in there. What's this? An ironing board. Oh. An ironing board? Well, it's better than a box car. Yeah. I can go to sleep and get my pants pressed at the same time. Thanks, June. You know, I was just thinking. Here we are in this flea bag, and what I could do for you with all that dough those guys got away with. Will you stop thinking about that money? All we're interested in is getting you and Steve cleared. Okay, okay. I was just supposing. Don't you ever suppose? Of course I do, but not about that. I have been thinking about you being free. And a lot of other things. Tom, about the police, doesn't it? Tom, you took the blacksmith's gun. Why didn't you tell me? Why did you hide it? Why shouldn't I carry a gun? I might need it. Those men we're looking for aren't packing water pistols. Well, if you get caught and the police find a gun on you. What's the difference? I'm wanted for murder anyway. Tom, I want to believe in you. I want to trust you. Right now, I don't know what to believe. Because I've got this gun? Perhaps. Other things. Not wanting to go to the police. Worrying about the money. Do you blame me? Tom, if you find them, you will turn them in. You won't do anything else. How can I convince you? Here. Will this help? A lot. No more doubting? No more doubting. You'd better get some sleep. Good night.
Get him up. Hold it. On the table. Darling. Get over there with him. How'd he get by Ma? So she's your Ma. It's a nice, big, crooked family. Now, look here, darling, whatever you want, that, that Rob won't get it. Maybe not. Maybe all it'll get me is a nice, sweet feeling of putting a bullet in each of you. For the way you made me sweat. You wouldn't do that. Oh, wouldn't I? I've been dreaming about it ever since I started looking for you. Give us a break, will you? Like you gave me. You got away, didn't you? Sure. For how long? If I get caught, I burn. For what? So you guys can enjoy that hundred grand? If it's a cut you want, put down that gat and we'll talk about it. I don't want a cut. I want it all. Where is it? We haven't got it. I'm itching to use this. Honest, it isn't here. We haven't got it, so it won't do any good to Papa's. Expect me to believe that? If I get away, I'll have something to enjoy. And if I fry, I'll have something to fry for. I tell you, we haven't got it. Another guy plans this job, and he's got it. So wait for him to fix our getaway. Do I get the door now, or do I let you have it? Don't you move. Put your hands up. Put them up. Give it all, Ma. <laughs> Ma, fix the light! Break it here, try and grab the door, will you? All right, Jack. That's enough. Yeah, it's enough of that. Stop it. There's been enough killing already. Listen, Marty. Stop it. There'll be no more killing. I'd like to know what else we can do with him. Thanks. Find out how he got here. Yeah, maybe he told us everything. Hey, Sonny, you want to do a little more talking? Come on, get up. Come on, sit down. How'd you find it? Through her. He's nuts. I never told him anything. How'd you know where we were? Some restaurant, Doyle. She left it in an old suitcase. Had the name of the place on it. That was smart. It's lucky I found the Doyle's before the cops had a chance to search her things. Maybe the cops let him come here purposely. And they're trailing him. You think I'd come here alone if I had the cops with me? Sure. Sonny figured he'd go off us out of the door and scram. Not bad figuring. All right, Ma. You don't want us to bump him. What do we do with him? Oh, wait a minute. I did come here for the dough. I'm hot. After all, I was taking your rap. You'd have done the same. So what? The spot I'm in, I can't hurt you. I'm worse off for the cops than you are. Let me hang around till you pull out. Or if you like, give me a small cut. Or take me with you. I'm good with the car. You know that. Might not be a bad idea. I don't want him around here. Like he says, he can't hurt us none. Maybe we could use him. Joe says that Shut he... Shut up about Joe. Okay, it's only for a couple of days. Yeah, we'll let him hang around. And if he don't behave, we can always take the screws out of him. That I'll enjoy. Okay for now, Mom? Nice. I'll get him some coffee. I'm awfully sorry I'm late. I missed the 8 o'clock bus. Texas has been very slow this morning. I'll be glad to stay later tonight if you like. That's all right. Dining room set up for lunch. Ever fiddle around with airplanes, Sonny? Yeah, I'm good at any kind of engine. Why? Oh, I might come in handy sometime. Small pie you made for lunch, Ma. Glad you liked it, son. That new girl's really a worker. But they helps the body out. Oh, that crack was aimed at me. Only if the shoe fits, dear. Jack, tell your old lady to lay off. I'm getting fed up. My, my, you weren't so touchy when you were slinging ash here. All right, cut it out, the both of you. Hey, you. Help Ma carry that upstairs. Sure. I thought you were afraid that he might... You 
know, there's something awful funny about that new dame coming here just before him. Maybe there's nothing to it. Then again, maybe there is. They're uh, really smart. Put him in the sink. Oh, this is Tom, a friend of ours. Oh, hello, sister. Hello. Um, Ma's put me up for a couple of days. Go on with the dishes. Okay, back. Anything I can do to help, sister? Yes, stop calling me sister. Ma sure knows how to pick her help. Okay, relax. Thought I told you to stay away from you. You took the gun off. I was afraid. Did they hurt you very much? You just got the first installment. How did you know? I followed you here. You put out the lights. We're together in this. Please don't leave me behind again. You might... Might what? You get killed or kill them. And even if you did get the money, you'd never be free. I'm not free now. But there's still a chance. You're certainly in this with both feet, sister. Oh, June! Hey, you sure do things for that apron. Here we go again. Take my advice, miss, and go back to the kitchen. This guy's the wolf of Highway 106. <laughs> take my advice and don't take his advice. Let's eat in there. Hey, I thought we were going to eat in the car. We were. Bring the coffee to us. Any table will do. Yeah, let me see. Number 16. That one again? Give 14 a whirl. Stop kibitzing, will you? Sixteen's my favorite. Hey, I'll bet you're pretty sharp on the dance floor. No, I'm not really. Oh, that's what I like, the modest type. He likes anything, as long as it wears skirts. I'll get you some sugar. Oh, why does everybody pick that piece? Why don't you take it easy, Frank? Come on, Jack, let's dance. Go away with it. You gotta get this barrel straight. Too bad that gun can't cook. Well, that makes you both even. Hey, that's pretty good. You get it? Gun can't cook, she can't. Oh. <laughs> I'm hysterical. I'll dance with you. You'll do what? I'll set this one out. Well, I won't know till I plug it in. There you are. Fill it up and dry it out. My man, the two days you've been here, you got everything working. Yep, everything hey, except Betty. You can't be that busy. Look, I've got the whole evening off and nothing to do with it. That cop beat it. Sorry, I'm busy tonight. Oh, why don't we get on the ground? I'm getting sick of this joint. So am I. So let's lay low. Wait. How long does he expect us to wait? Suppose he can run out with that dough. Yeah, how about that? All right, Betty, you'll beat it up to Joe's tonight and find out what's holding him up. When do you want me to go? Leave here about 9.30 or quarter to 10. What about Sonny? We leave here, we'll take him with us. Bump him on the way. Oh, that music will drive me nuts. It's a state cop that used to hang around Betty. Cops hanging around jukeboxes, people coming and going. We ought never to come here. In a minute, somebody's going to get wise. Calm down, will you? Joe said this is the best kind of a front we could have. Yeah? Wider open, it seems. The less liable they are to figure it to hide out. Well, I wish we were out of here. I don't feel good with cops around. Here's a list of things to get. Have you got everything straight? Yes. Remember, everything has to go like clockwork. How about the cop? Can you get a date with him, all right? I wish everything were that easy. Bring him here at 11. I'll start my act at 10.30 sharp. The lights go off right after 10. I'll dump this in the gas tank of Betty's car. Be sure that it'll get well into the country before it clogs it up. Oh, well, you know I have everything. Just put the things back at the jukebox. If the lights go off on schedule, I'll know everything's okay. Because your gag with the fuse who gave me the idea in the first place. June.
What's the matter with the lights in this joint? It's dark suddenly around here, doesn't it? Guess another fuse blew. Will one of you come up and fix the lights? They're out all over the house. So let this guy do it. He's a handyman around here. Come on, keep going. Sure. Let's see now. Oh, that one's all right. Come on, come on, hurry it up. Uh-oh, there's a bad one. There's another one. Probably a short in the wiring. If we don't fix it, it's liable to keep blowing out. Well, I'll fix it. Let's try in there. Might be in that jukebox. See if you can find the wiring, Diogenes. What did you call me? Diogenes. He was a philosopher, went around with a lamp. What for? He was looking for an honest man. What for? You got me. Yeah, here it is. Yeah, how long is it going to take you to fix it? I don't know. Ten minutes, maybe half an hour. You don't need me. This place needs some fresh air. I'll bet this window hasn't been opened since the house was built. Leave it the way it is. It's hot in here. I like it hot. I don't. I need some air. Look, I've had about as much of you as I can stand. Yeah? How do you think I feel about you? Boy, you dang. Take it easy. I think you'd better listen to me. I'm sick of listening to you. Nobody asked you to bustle in here. You don't think I'd bust in here with just one trick in my hand, do you? What do you mean? 
I got friends in town. They know where I am. They've also got Betty right now. Why, you on it. And if anything happens to me... How do we know he ain't bluffing again? Betty should be where she was going by now, shouldn't she? Why don't you check? Riverford, 920. What is this? Another scheme to get the dough? Nope. What's the big idea? I want you to sign a statement that I had nothing to do with that bank holdup. Either me or Steve Reynolds. You're a screw. No answer. What have you done with it? He wants us to give him a confession on that bank job. Either you start writing or they take care of Betty. Well? What do you want me to write? Just tell the truth about the holdup. Close for the night. I, uh. I'm looking for Ma. Just a minute, I'll get her. Hey. Say, don't I know you? I don't think so. I'll get Ma. Now, wait a minute. It's all that... Oh, hello, Jill. Who's this? It's June, man, your waitress. How long has she been here? A couple of days. A couple of days, huh? You were in my place with some guy looking for Betty. I couldn't be. She doesn't even know Betty. She just came here looking for a job. Yeah? We'll see. What's the matter, Joe? Is this dame trying to... Sure. That's the guy? What guy? What's this dame and her husband pulling on you? Husband? He says they came to his place looking for Betty. They used to know her. Well, what do you got to say now, Sonny? Well, she's your wife, eh? Huh? Where is Betty? When are you down with her? You got to tell us, or... Oh, no. This ought to be easy. You tell us what he did with her. Oh, it's going to be like that, huh? You better spill it, sister. All right. She had nothing to do with it. All right, you talk, then. Betty's probably on her way to his place now. I took up her gas so she'd stall before she got there. There's nobody else in on this, would you? No. Let's go back to your place and see. Yeah, that's a good idea. Wait a minute. What are we going to do with them? We're about through here. I just don't give it to them now. Not yet. Yeah, we'll take them with us. Come on. They've been giving us a run around. Then we can do it. Where are you taking us? To rip? Chet! Get going. She ought to be along here someplace. That's her car. Now we'll keep going. We may see her down the road. I get a date with her, I have to be late. Looks like they're closed. I'll wait for you. I guess she got tired of waiting. Well, pal, you're batting an even zero. Mm -hmm. Hey, who's that? Betty! Betty, how have you been? Hello, Al. Hiya, Betty. Hey, you look like you've been hiking clear from New York. Yeah, I missed connection. Oh, well, you must be dead. Let's go inside. We'll cut up a few touches. Baby, are you a sight for sore eyes? 
Hey, where have you been keeping yourself, anyway? I must look awful. Let me fix up a bit, and I'll tell you all about it. Okay. Better look out. She don't slip out the back door on you. I'll be right back. <laughs> So I'm batting zero, huh? Oh. Hey, give me a nickel. Well, not number 16 again. It's driving me batty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come here. Oh, you got no ear for music. Come on, give me. No, nope. only if you promise to play another one. You'll hear it and like it. I may hear it, but I won't like it. <laughs> oh, this is my favorite. Look, I'll see you in the morning. I want some fresh air. Look, I've had about as much of you as I can. Yeah? How do you think I feel about you? Hey, take it easy. I think you'd better listen to me. I'm sick of listening to you. Nobody asked you to bustle in here. You know, they got bust in here with just one trick in my hand, do you? What do you mean? I got friends in town. They know where I am. They've also got Betty right now. Why, you, Paul. And if anything happens to me... River Ford doesn't answer. Oh, they had time to get there. i got to get rid of those cops. Go and tell them I've got a headache. You got yourself into this. All right, I'll do it myself. Here, hold it. With all the time to run into them. Why'd you have to come back here? Why don't you keep on going? The only ride I could get was this way. If it was, I had to walk far enough. You weren't so lazy. I'll dry up. i got to fix something to tell my cop. You keep trying the phone. Now, do I look a little better? Well, June better look as good when we find her. Where have they taken them? Where is this Joe's place? What's come over you two? Come on, Betty, you better spill it. Come on. Come on, get out. Well, she isn't here. Maybe Betty went back to Moore's. Better phone. She better be there. Come on, get inside. Uh-uh. All right, operator, did you trace that call? Right. The River Ford Inn, the rich room. Let's go. Once more, what'd you do with it? I told you. Come on, tell me, what did you do with it? Maybe you want to talk. He's telling you the truth. He doesn't know where she is. Look out!
you're Durley. Yeah. Sorry, I'll have to take you in. Yeah, I know. Can I give you a hand? Thanks. Hey, uh, tonight's my night off. Uh, what will you be doing? I'm afraid I'll be busy, Al. Tonight and every night. Okay, now, uh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna put this on the table and say it. Those scenes, uh, where they were filmed a very, very dark, and, okay, I know, this is a, this is a noir film, but still, some of those films, some of those scenes were just filmed a little too dark. Uh... Kind of hard to see in a few places, wasn't it? But, Durling wins the day and gets the girl. Now, we do see, uh, I, I love to tell this story. Uh, the scenes where they're in the diner and everyone's hitting number 16 on the jukebox, but it starts to get to a point where everyone hates it because it's just played so much. They're tired of it and it's driving them crazy and, and, and they just hate it. It reminds me of one time, uh, this was back when I was in high school, uh, me and a bunch of friends went to a pizza hut up in my hometown, uh, Marion, Ohio. Uh, it's about an hour north of Dublin here. I remember specifically, it was roughly Christmas time, sometime in December of 1980. We're sitting in this pizza hut and we get this gag. They, they had Bing Crosby's White Christmas on the jukebox. And me and my friends, we get this gag idea. We get all of us seated around the table. Hey, how many quarters you got? How many quarters? And we all digging quarters out of our pockets. And we went over to the jukebox and the selection for Bing Crosby's White Christmas, I think it was C7. Just shove, and, and you got three plays for a quarter. Put the quarter in and just punch C7, C7, C7. Next quarter in, C7, C7. We had Bing Crosby's White Christmas going for probably at or over an hour straight. And we're just all sitting around there at the table giggling away and the place was maybe half or three quarters full. And everyone else there, you know, you'd see people turn around, you know, they're looking at us, you know, it was pretty obvious we were the culprits, but we just had the biggest gag out of that. And you know, ever since that night, and, and you know, we're 40 plus years later, anytime I ever hear Bing Crosby's White Christmas, I think of that night at that pizza hut up in Marion. It, it's just one of those sentimental memories, you know, that, that you can never forget. And seeing that happen, you know, in these scenes tonight, you know, it was number 16 on the jukebox. <laughs> it just brought back such a great memory watching this movie and those scenes. Well, I thank you for spending the evening with us here at Full Moon Matinee. Stay with us as we continue our further investigations into the long-lost evidence of Hollywood. Until next time.